Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the two hour chart of silver on NetDania. And you can see we're still in the trend channel that I had drawn. We're now pushing up to the upper limits of it. Interesting here that we have uh, a MACD crossover after a reset just below the zero line. And we got this strong rally. We just almost touched $18. And that is a price we haven't seen since back in October, right before the election. And you can see this area here, I've drawn an arrow to it. That's an area of overhead resistance now because that's the area where we broke out, we're getting a move, and then uh, we just got punished. Uh, you can see the volume that came in to bring the price back down. That's what happened with this huge smackdown and subsequent drop all the way back down to almost 1550. So we're coming back up to test that. We're coming up on strength with uh, how strong this bounce off the bottom of the trend channel was, the fact that the MACD is barely reset. So let's push out to the four hour to get uh, a view of that old high. Actually, we'll go to the eight hour. So you can see the view of that spike top high that we got back around $21 uh, last July. And we've been falling ever since. Uh, the, the main downtrend line is gonna be right here. Uh, roughly, we'll draw it in this area. It could be as high as here, or it could be drawn a little bit lower. Uh, if we draw from this top, you can see that we've already broken through that uh, with this breakout here. So the next trend line is going to be at about 1850 is going to confirm a breakout and a challenge of that old 21 high. Now out to the weekly you can see uh, the MACD is still backing and filling. Not much more information there. Uh, we have to have significant price moves to get a change in the MACD. Now I want to spend the rest of the time on Bitcoin. We have a huge news story coming out of China. And if you remember the history of it, Bitcoin uh, was uh, the margin requirements uh, or the use of margin on Bitcoin was regulated. And that's when we got that top, right when we were breaking into new highs in the Chinese currency. Now we've had a second hit against Bitcoin coming out of the Central Bank of China. I'm going to read this story and then explain what this means. Bitcoin drops by $100 as China's Central Bank corrals the market. Chinese Bitcoin exchanges have disabled withdrawals of the cryptocurrency after meeting with People's Bank of China indicating the central bank has stepped up its efforts to regulate the market. Throughout January, the People's Bank of China made announcements that it was looking into Bitcoin, including setting up a task force to carry out inspections and ensure Bitcoin exchanges had implemented anti-money laundering systems. Then on Thursday, the central bank announced that it had met with nine exchanges to warn them they would be closed if they violated regulations. This prompted the three main Chinese Bitcoin exchanges, BTCC, Huobi, and OKCoin, OK to temporarily disable Bitcoin withdrawal. Users can deposit and withdraw Yuan, but not Bitcoin, for the next 30 days. Now, that's kind of interesting. Uh, they're trying to portray this as these exchanges implemented the self-regulation here. Well, obviously that's not the case. Uh, they all chose 30 days. So it's fairly clear here that the Chinese government through their central bank ordered these exchanges to do this. Freeze Bitcoin withdrawals for 30 days while they improve their anti-money laundering systems and customer identification measures. The news caused the price for Bitcoin to drop sharply on Thursday from near a one-month high of around $1,063 to as low as $954. Bitcoin prices recovered marginally and are currently at $964. Despite the hit to prices, Bitcoin analysts believe the move by the People's Bank of China will be healthy for the market. Quote, the PBOC moves to regulate Bitcoin 
more stringently will bring short-term woes, but will ultimately strengthen the ecosystem. Charles Hayter, chief executive and founder of digital currency comparison website Crypto Compare, told CNBC via email. The moves by the People's Bank of China and the improved systems will add respectability and rigor to the Bitcoin market, according to Hayter. These measures, along with the introduction of standard trading fees by Bitcoin by Chinese exchanges, should also slow down the volume of Bitcoin trading across China, which had become a cause for concern. According to Crypto Compare data, trading volumes on Chinese exchanges have fallen from 10 million Bitcoins per day to a range of 30,000 to 90,000. So what is that percentage drop? Well, to a million would be 90%. So to 100,000 will be 99%. So this is a 99 point something percent drop in volume. Bitcoin Yuan trades made up 98% of the market share. This is now around 26% behind Bitcoin dollar and Bitcoin yen pairs. Quote, this has been a long time coming and many in this industry view these developments as a positive cleanup. We already see liquidity resettling in other trading pairs like BTC Japanese Yen and BTC US Dollar. Fran Strojnar, co-founder and CEO of data research company Brave New Coin, told CNBC via email, quote, These marketplace changes will inevitably slow nefarious activity and open channels to more and more institutional investors. In my opinion, the PBOC cleanup is the best thing that could have happened to Bitcoin this year. Other central banks may now be considering how to regulate Bitcoin activity. Quote, I think all governments are trying to figure out how they can adjust laws and regulations to this new field, allowing them to get the benefit of the technology while at the same time curbing any usage for illicit purposes. Linus Lindgren, strategic investor and advisor at BTCX India, told CNBC by email, quote, my recommendation to any regulator wondering how to go ahead with this would be, in, would be to involve the industry and work together to reach common goals. So there's your general uh, disinformation from the mainstream media. Now, there's so much here to talk about. Um, first thing that stands out more than anything else is that this is supposedly anti-money laundering. Well, we know I've talked about many times that uh, the money laundering thing is a complete ruse, as well as the anti-terrorism, anti-drug trade, anti-child pornography, uh, anti-whatever, uh, all these illicit things. We know that the governments are the ones who do these things, and we know that the shadow government is primarily funded by these black market illicit activities. And that money is laundered through the banks, HSBC, etc. Uh, all have been uh, busted uh, laundering money for drugs and everything else. So uh, that's not what it's about. Now, the other thing that really jumps out at you is this 30-day suspension of Bitcoin withdrawals. Now, you would think that if their purpose is to stop the money launderers, they would make a blockage of withdrawal of the currency rather than the Bitcoins. Uh, because if you're laundering money, then obviously what you're trying to get out is clean money. Uh, so that's just transparent. It has nothing to do with money laundering. Uh, this is something similar to what we saw at Mt. Gox at one point. And it does have an effect on price because what happens is, is that if you're only allowed to withdraw the currency, but you're not allowed to withdraw the Bitcoin, then there's pressure for people to, if there's doubts as to the, uh, whether the exchange is going to go under, whether there's more regulation, whether your account's going to be locked, if there's any doubts as to what's going to happen to your money, you obviously want to get your money off that exchange. We've seen these panics many, many times. But if the only way to get your money off the exchange is to withdraw the currency itself and not the Bitcoin because they don't allow you to, then obviously you're going to take those Bitcoins if you want to get your money out, sell them for whatever currency the exchange has, and then withdraw the currency. Well, that was the intent of the Central Bank of China because very clearly they are threatened by this. 
Now, I find this fascinating because we're no longer seeing, as I started covering Bitcoin in 2011, trying to explain to people why it is what it is, why it is the next big thing, why the central banks cannot stop it, why it defeats capital controls, why it is one of the most revolutionary things that's been invented since the printing press. Uh, there were so many attacks against those arguments. Now, you can see here, there are no attacks anymore. This is a tacit admission by the central banks of the world. It's not just the Central Bank of China, but all the central banks of the world are now admitting openly that Bitcoin is a threat to their very existence. In fact, Bitcoin is a threat to the existence of all banks, just as email is a threat to the existence of all post offices. Uh, Bitcoin is a threat to the existence of banks. So let's do some analysis and look at the chart because it's fascinating what has happened here. So we're going to start off with the OK coin chart. Uh, that's the main one. You can see that we're trading at a price of 973 on OK coin. But you can also see that we're trading at a price of 994 on Bitfinex. We're trading at a price of 984 on BTCE, which again is a Russian exchange. And then we're Bitstamp is at a price of 1000. So you can see here, if you watch in this area, when I change charts, uh, you just keep an eye on this area. And what you're looking for here is from this top, from this uh, drop, on the red candlestick, keep an eye on how far up the market has recovered from the bottom. So you can see here on Bitstamp, we're actually now past a 50% recovery of this move. Uh, if you look at BTCE, you can see same sort of thing. If you look at Bitfinex, same sort of thing, although Bitfinex has not recovered as much. But when we look at OKCoin, look at that. You can see that OKCoin has only recovered, if even a third of that, while the others have recovered over half. So you can see that China has gone from driving the Bitcoin market to following the others that are driving the Bitcoin market. We have a $20 premium in Bitfinex over OKCoin. We used to run anywhere from $50 to $100 premium in China over the others. That's the result of this. I think that was the intent of the People's Bank of China is to drive down Bitcoin prices. I don't think there's any question about that. Now the big question going forward is going to be, is this going to succeed or is this going to fail? Now I personally believe that this is a suicidal move by China because I don't think Bitcoin can be stopped. And if Bitcoin cannot be stopped, then what's going to happen is that trading in Bitcoin is going to move from China to a freer jurisdiction. It doesn't take uh, much competition because Bitcoin is so liquid, it's so easily transferable that it doesn't take much competition at all to move away from wherever it is. So, for example, let me show you the list of countries. This is the legality of Bitcoin by country. And there are some countries that have made it illegal. There are some countries that just uh, ignore it. But there are also some countries, Vietnam, although this, this isn't updated, you can see here. Uh, in December 2016, the government of Vietnam confirmed it wants to develop a legal framework for Bitcoin in Vietnam that should be finished by December 2017. So Vietnam is warming up to Bitcoin. But you can also see countries like Chile. There is no regulation on the use of Bitcoin. So it's just a grab bag here. You can go through this list yourself. But my point is, is that it only takes one country to be Bitcoin friendly to see all of this money flow there. And China apparently has chosen to not be that country. That is a grave mistake, in my opinion, on the part of the Chinese. I think if the Chinese really wanted to make it a game over situation, uh, possibly for their own currency, but a game over situation for the West, uh, no question, they, would, they could 
openly embrace Bitcoin and uh, begin to uh, integrate it into their system, that would be the death knell of uh, fiat currencies. But I think it's kind of obvious now that the bankers are in control in China as much as they are in control in all the other countries of the world. So uh, it's going to be interesting watching this going forward. Now, let's take a look at Fiat Leak because I've covered Fiat Leak before. And uh, in the past, I, I started this running a while ago. So you can see we've got a total of 527 Bitcoins. Uh, basically, the premise of Fiat Leak is how much money is leaking into Bitcoin from fiat currencies. And uh, it's, it's not that accurate, but it gives you a rough estimate. Now, you can see here that uh, the Chinese Yuan is showing a volume of 240 Bitcoin or 6,000 Yuan. And uh, maybe this is in um, thousands, probably. And uh, the U.S. dollar is uh, 274 Bitcoin volume. And uh, so that's probably uh, $994,000 would be my guess. Uh, the others really aren't even worth mentioning. You can see a tiny bit in uh, Brazil and uh, South Africa in Russia. But really, the only two players here are going to be China and the United States. So the United States has gone above China. And I suspect if I left this up, that would be uh, confirmed. Now, if you remember in the past, when I did the live fiat leak, the money flowing into China was absolutely unbelievable. It was just dollar signs flowing as fast as you could see uh, going into, or I'm sorry, little Bitcoin uh, symbols flowing into China. That stopped. And that... Uh, fits exactly with what we see uh, with the difference in the OKCoin OK chart versus the Bitstamp chart. Now, what is the upshot of this as far as uh, dollar trading in Bitcoin? Well, uh, that's a plus for dollar trading in Bitcoin, and you can see it's reflected in the chart here. But also, what is going to happen if it turns out that the 30-day ban on withdrawal of Bitcoin out of these exchanges in China, what happens if that turns into a permanent ban, which could happen? Things like that have precedent. Uh, what does that effectively do? Well, we've seen similar things in the past with Mt. Gox. Uh, we saw it with the Dread Pirate Roberts uh, situation. Uh, so I would say that uh, just to bring all the things in here and look at what the market view is this in the short term it's bearish and in my account my Polonius account I'm actually hedged in tether right now I'm not holding any Bitcoin uh, I got out uh, during this crash so I'm in US dollar tether looking to get back into Bitcoin I'm hedged but my other cryptocurrencies are denominated in Bitcoin which are roughly the same amount so I'm uh, double hedged in a way but uh, what is going to be the short-term reaction? I think the short-term reaction is going to be uh, more downside for Bitcoin, just because anytime we get uncertainty and bad news, we tend to get sell-offs. Uh, I personally don't think that this sell-off is done. I may be wrong, and this may be it. This may be the end of this sell-off. But uh, what is the outlook for the intermediate term? Now, for the intermediate term, if you think about it, if it turns out within this 30 days that that gets extended, then really, if you think about it, those Bitcoins are essentially locked up. How many Bitcoins are there? Uh, I don't know. How many Bitcoins uh, total we have outstanding? I think the number is roughly 14 or 15 million out of the total possible 21 million. How many are in China? I would say probably a lot. How many are on those exchanges? I don't know. Uh, the fact they allowed margin trading there probably indicates that people were using leverage rather than using their own Bitcoins. How many were people storing in wallets versus keeping on the exchanges? We don't know that information. But let's just say there were roughly 3 million Bitcoins that were on those exchanges that can't be withdrawn. Intermediate term, those, those coins are not available to be dumped on the market. Therefore, that's like 3 million Bitcoins just disappearing. 
and the number of Bitcoins in existence going from 15 million to 12 million. That should cause a very big boost in price in the intermediate term. Now, in the long term, I personally believe it's going to be a wash because we saw with the Dread Pirate Roberts case, the FBI agents involved actually ended up being indicted and going to prison because they were stealing or, or embezzling Bitcoin and selling it for cash. And it, it's very unlikely that these exchanges even if they steal the bitcoins that their uh, users have on the exchange, it's highly unlikely that they would destroy those coins. They're too valuable. So those coins are going to find their way out of there somehow, even if they're uh, stolen, and they're going to be sold for currency. That currency may likely be the U.S. dollar. So uh, it's going to result in a an adjustment between prices in China and the United States. But as far as Bitcoin is concerned, in the long term, I think it's a wash. So in the short term, it's bearish. In the inter intermediate term, it's bullish. In the long term, it doesn't really matter. So that's a very, very interesting story. We're going to have to wait and see what happens with it. I'm still in the bearish camp. I'm waiting for a crossover of this. Generally, when we get sell-offs in Bitcoin, uh, they aren't as short-lived as this one has been so far. They tend to run for a while. Again, I could be wrong, but from the chart formation, you can see the absolute uh, evaporation of volume. Uh, I'm looking for more downside. On Bitfinex, you can see that the volume has died as well. Uh, there was volume on the sell-off, but uh, not a lot of volume subsequent to the sell-off. So overall, it looks like Bitcoin volume has dried up quite a bit. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. So back to the silver chart, we're looking for a breach of that 1850 price. That's going to give us a couple of confirmations. That's going to confirm that uh, the uptrend is still in place, the trend channel. Uh, it's going to be a breakout of the trend channel, which will be bullish. But it's also going to be a, a challenge of this co large consolidation area here, starting with this small area here, and then ultimately this area here. We're going to have to work our way through to get into new highs above that 21. And we'll talk to you next time.